whenever somebody has had uh, miscarriages or failed ivf there is one important uh, investigation or uh, suggestion what we do as fertility specialist that is pgta meaning pre genetic testing for any aneuploidy this is a genetic uh, testing what is done for the embryo what we actually do is we do a biopsy of the trophectodome cells meaning the outside uh, layer of the cells are taken out six to seven cells are taken out and chromosomal karyotyping is done for the embryo this will give us a result whether the embryo is chromosomally normal or abnormal i'm dr archana as ayanathan from dr archana ivr chennai so pgta is a very very important investigation what we offer for or people who have failed in ivf and people who who have had uh, miscarriages even if it is a single miscarriage if the couple has opted for ivf it is really worthy doing it because again a miscarriage without we finding out if there is any genetic abnormality is actually a grave mistake so before doing this genetic analysis you need to be prepared because we need your karyotyping also the husband and the wife's karyotyping so that is going to tell us whether you are chromosomally normal or not sometimes there are conditions that you know the husband and wife can have certain chromosomal aberrations but at the same time they can be really healthy individuals outside so for example those are reciprocal translocations and other kind of small aberrations in the chromosomes but understand that you know having a normal chromosome pattern in your karyotyping along with these small reciprocal translocation or changes in the chromosome is really going to affect your fertility potential this could be the reason why you have been having miscarriages and this could be the reason why your ivf has failed also so investigate properly find out what is your karyotype find out if the wife is 46xx and the husband is 46xy if there is any additional uh, text written uh, next to this interpretation say for example i have had a certain number of patients that have this particular uh, system written next to their interpretation like the long arm of uh, the so and so number of the chromosome the satellite part of it the arm is lengthened the heterochromatin is more this kind of additional interpretation is uh, an understanding that you know according to me i have done treatment for many of such patients we have done pgta for such patients and despite doing that and despite transferring normal chromosome embryos they have had resulted in an implantation failure their heartbeat positive and then later on uh, the heartbeat had stopped these kind of problems are what i have seen personally in my experience so this kind of this uh, long arm um, lengthening or shortening or whatever extra information is given there in your karyotype please mark it off in your karyotype report because that is one report which is not going to change at all it is by birth so it is not going to change but that is a very important notification what is given by the genesis but they will also give you something in the comment saying that you know this is not going to affect your fertility potential but as a fertility specialist with all the retrospective data i have with me after treating so many patients who have had these problems in their karyotype so it has come to an understanding that this will definitely hinder in your ivf results it might cause implantation failures and it might cause a pregnancy loss also so when you have such conditions in your karyotype what do you do next see simply saying it must be either a karyotype which is abnormal for either the husband or the wife or the couple must have had implantation failures or the couple must have had uh, miscarriages before when uh, you are going through something like this you need to opt for this pre genetic testing for any ploid so this testing will uh, let us know whether the chromosomes are normal or abnormal so for a normal chromosome they will tell us it is euploid for an abnormal chromosome they will tell us it is aneuploid when they are telling it is aneuploid we will have an additional information written over there calling mosaic we will have an additional information written in the remarks that's nothing but mosaic when they say mosaic they will categorize it as low mosaic high mosaic so some people do transfer these low mosaic embryos because low mosaic embryos have a chance of having a good uh, genetic predisposition later and uh, do have a chance of uh, becoming a live birth but when there is a high mosaic you should understand that there is a 50 to 70% chance of you having a chromosomally abnormal baby so coming to these low mosaic so now that we know that we cannot transfer this these high mosaic embryos coming to these low mosaic embryos why is that when we did a pgta we were not able to tell whether they will be converted into a live birth because you know what you have to understand blastocyst is a fully developed human embryo 
outside the body in vitro right that is the maximum level to which we can develop a human embryo but we also need to understand that after the day 5 also god does so much to these embryos there is lot of auto correction happening inside the embryo there are lot of uh, genetic corrections happening this happens for a period of 8 to 9 days after fertilization but whereas we do a biopsy of blastocyst because that is the highest level where we can develop these embryos to we still do not have a chance of developing any human embryo to 8th or 9th day so when we do a blastocyst biopsy what information we have and when we have a low mosaic embryo remember that there is a chance of auto correction which can happen inside the body of the mother and if the auto correction happens if there are certain genetic errors which are getting uh, resolved on its own then the baby can be chromosomally normal when it is born when you have a low mosaic embryo and when a husband's report is telling that you know the chromosome is rearranged the length is more or it's shortened the number of chromosomes is mentioned in that case you can do an additional investigation to find out what actually is wrong with you because there are a lot of genetic disorders in the human body there is no way that we can detect all of them but we can screen a large number of these genetic abnormalities using an investigation called whole exome sequencing so this whole exome sequencing will give you an idea what is actually wrong with you where genetically something has gone wrong with you what the error is if you have this report with you this will definitely let us know whether we need to do an additional investigation for the embryo to find out if there is any other mutation or if there is any other structural rearrangement in the embryo doing such investigations will definitely give us an idea whether the chance of having a live birth is good or not with a particular embryo what you are choosing for transfer always remember here we are talking about three implantation failures or even a single miscarriage or even a single implantation failure in that case doing only the genetic uh, testing is not going to help you the genetic testing is one part of it and the other part of the story is the wife where the embryo is going to sit and grow so you need to evaluate the wife's uh, uterine parameters uterine factors whether the window of implantation is uh, correct and whether she has any kind of systemic Uh, problems like autoimmune disorders which we've been talking really a lot about these days right so just checking for the embryos just by doing a karyotype and you know having a abnormal report and trying to find out if the baby is going to be abnormal or not is not going to result in a positive pregnancy result understand that the uterine factors and systemic problems of the wife also may play a role in implantation failures as well as miscarriages so whenever you opting for treatment, treatment for such problems do a comprehensive checkup do a comprehensive uh, investigation surrounding all these factors that will definitely uh, result in a live birth in your hand